Triple set point. With tennis history on his racket, Rafael Nadal surely knew the ghosts of 2017 were present. That year in Melbourne, Nadal had a similar advantage over Roger Federer in the final. He was up in the fifth set and he faltered. It's in! Victory for Federer! It was deja vu for Nadal when Medvedev broke his serve deep in the decider. Amazing turn of events and you have to have incredible admiration for Medvedev's level of belief that even at 5-4, 30 love down, he saw a route back. But of course, that's not what happened. It's the miracle in Melbourne. With a clutch performance in one of the biggest matches of his life, he's reignited the GOAT debate. Really, for the history of the game and the big debate of the era, who's the greatest player of this era between Djokovic and Federer Nadal? You know, what happened in Australia could have a big impact. Nadal arrived in Melbourne more than a month before the tournament. He'd never spent such a long time at a single event. I think it's a great place to be, to be back on tour now, so just enjoying the fact that I am here practicing with the guys again and competing last week. As the tournament crept closer, he didn't know if he would be able to compete. The mental scars of Nadal's career injuries had taken their toll. When I broke my, my wrist, for example, uh, you know that's going to be like three months and then you have a schedule, no? But when you have an injury like I had with my knee or now with my foot, that things are not clear and mentally it's much tougher. At Melbourne Park, the Spaniard was taking his first tentative steps back on tour from the career-threatening foot injury that sidelined him for season 2021. If I am healthy and I am able to, to practice with not many problems I'm in terms of pain or in terms of limitation, I enjoy practicing. I enjoy the fact that uh, I am going through a process that I have to come back. Uh, all the challenges that um, I know is tough to come back from uh, important injuries, especially at my age, but in some, terms, in some ways uh, is a motivation for me. Nadal has looked pretty good tennis-wise. The, there are still questions circling uh, about his health. Uh, the chronic foot injury uh, is real, and, and it's something that is going to be with him for the rest of his career and his life, and, and hopefully he'll be able to, to manage the pain, which is all he can do, uh, according to him. He won a tune-up event in Melbourne in the first week of the season. In the first two matches at the Australian Open, it was vintage Nadal. Nadal with match point. It's a 70th win here at the Australian Open for Rafa. And he was very good from start to finish. After a routine straight sets victory in the first round, it was more of the same for Nadal in the second. Nadal improves to a perfect 16-0 in second round matches here in Melbourne. And he does so at the expense of the qualifier, Yannick Huntman. He dropped his first set of the tournament against 28th seed Karen Hutchinov in the third round. Triple set point. Magnificent effort from Hutchinov. But a Hutchinov comeback was quickly extinguished with some trademark cross-court brilliance. Before Nadal eventually saw off the Russian challenge. Back into the last 16 for Rafael Nadal. The dream is still very much alive. In the fourth round against battling Frenchman Adrian Manorino, the match centred around a 30-game first set tiebreaker. Rafa! In the topsy-turvy tiebreak, Nadal failed to capitalise on six set points. Oh, he dropped in! But as it reached the half-hour mark, it was lucky number seven for Rafa. Oh, oh what a way to finish it off! He is in seventh heaven. 
The Spaniard eventually reached his 14th quarter-final at the Australian Open with an ace. What a way to seal the deal. That guy, man, as tough as a two-dollar steak. Well, great feelings, no? Uh, be back on quarter-finals here in Australia after all the things that I, I am going through the last uh, year and a half means a lot to me, you know? So I, I think I played a, a good game again against a very difficult opponent today. The win extended his second week streak at every slam he's played since his 2017 comeback. Only Federer has achieved more in the men's game. But to get any further, he would have to get past hard-hitting Canadian Denis Shapovalov. Uh, he's one of the best players of the world. And uh, honestly, when he's playing well, it's very difficult to stop him. Now. He has an amazing shot, amazing potential um, from every single part of the game. But we are in quarterfinals of uh, the Australian Open now, so you can't expect another thing. When the pair first met in 2018, the young Canadian famously beat Nadal, but hadn't won since. Champion stuff here from Nadal at the moment in the opening set. Despite clinching the first set, it wasn't all going Nadal's way. Uh, Rafa actually not hitting the ball particularly well no, here. He's let him off. With Rafa serving to stay in the third set, Shapovalov found a way through. Brilliant ecstasy for Shapovalov. Saw his opportunity and he was in the right headspace to take advantage of it. The momentum had shifted and the Canadian found a way to level up the match. Held that beautifully. Yeah. Nadal expecting the cross court. And the times are a-changing. In the fifth, Nadal broke early and got back on top. And after four hours on court, Nadal finally had match point. Cue the applause, it's seventh heaven for Rafa in Melbourne. A seventh semi-final. That was a miracle. I am not 21 anymore, so... <laughs> 21 is the number the greats chase to break the tie for Grand Slam title supremacy. He's probably creating a whole other generation of Rafa fans and, and inspiring kids to want to play the game because uh, what he shows every time, what he showed today was just so impressive. The passion, the joy for competing at that level is off the charts. And for him to be doing that at this point in his career and still producing the kind of tennis he is, I mean, we're lucky. I hope that he stays around as long as he possibly can. Ruff has won a, a Grand Slam 20 times. And when you win a Grand Slam 20 times, you know how to win them. Um, he hasn't had the greatest of successes down here in Australia, um, due to a, sometimes a lot of injuries. But if he's, to, if he's there in the end, um, and let's hope we have him maybe playing Daniil in the final, that would be a great final, but I, I still think Daniil um, Medvedev's a favourite for me. The greatest fighter to play the game, up against the first Italian man to reach an Australian Open semi-final. And when he broke early in the first set, it looked an uphill struggle for Matteo Berrettini. That is just supreme, sublime there from Nadal. The Italian might have been down, but he wasn't out. <laughs> How do you like that? Striking back in the third. Berrettini breaks with a bullet. But you never write off Rafael Nadal, and he landed the killer blow in the fourth set to reach another major final. Rafael Nadal will contest a sixth Australian Open final on Sunday. Can I ask what you said to, to Rafa at the net? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I said, uh, well done, well done. Uh, we always had uh, a great relationship with Rafa. The way he behaves and his attitude, like we were talking about, I learned so much from him, so I wanted to say good luck and again, bravo. Here we are at the Rod Laver Arena, the final match of this year's Australian OP. With title 21 in his sights, it was up to Daniil Medvedev to revel in his role as the disruptor. It's a great rivalry and, uh, you know, I'm happy to, to have the chance to, to try to stop uh, one more time uh, uh, somebody from uh, making history. We know that, uh, you know, from the first till last point, he's going to fight his best and that's what I'm going to try to do also. 
I know what, what's happening. I know what Rafa is going for. I knew what Novak was going for. I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, I don't. I even try not to, to listen about this. But it's kind of their thing, you know, it's not mine. Iconic trophy, legendary evening, a night for history. For me, it's, it's about being the final of Australian Open, no? more than uh, the other numbers. No? For me, I give myself a chance to be in another final of Australian Open and have the chance to win. Another Australian Open is much more important than the rest of the numbers. No? Uh, my happiness will not depend on, on 21 or 20. No? One of the hardest matchups for both of these two players in tonight's final, Daniel Medvedev up against Rafael Nadal. It's going to be tough for him. Um, I, you know, Rafa's game was built around his brute strength and his ability to overpower and run down everything. If he was 100% fit, I'd put Rafa right in the picture, but I don't know how you beat Medvedev not being 100% fit. I know he's got a lot of work to do to both get into the finals, but to me, Medvedev's the pick. The world number two, not weighed down by history, immediately started chipping away at Nadal. It's gorgeous, so calm, so composed. Going on to breeze his way through the first set. This has been clinical, really. The second set wasn't so easy, with Nadal finishing a 40-shot rally with a touch of class. Wow, what a finish. Unbelievable. The 40th shot of that rally was out of this world. It was the Russian who eventually took the set after an hour and 24 minutes. That is truly majestic from Medvedev. What a way to finish the second set. Absolutely spellbinding. But Nadal turned the tables, taking the third. Medvedev leads by two sets to one. And then the fourth. <laughs> to a fifth we go. After more than five hours and coming back from two sets to love down, Nadal finally achieved history. It's the miracle in Melbourne in one of the most improbable victories of all time. For me, it's all about uh, have the chance to, to enjoy again the, this beautiful sport. 21 major titles from one of the greatest players of all time. Yeah, I've been super emotional. Uh, Honestly, just winning the Australian Open uh, means, yeah, I don't know, difficult to describe. Uh, if when we landed here a couple of weeks ago, something impossible to imagine. No? For the 2022 Australian Open men's singles, Rafael Nadal. I want to, to stay at one moment in time, and uh, today is the day to, to celebrate this.